Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life channel. The purpose of this channel is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. And we do that here with weekly channeled conversations with interesting afterlife guests. So today I'm actually kind of doing a personal share slash probably a channel with um, someone who has been a big part of my childhood. And I have a little backstory I wanna share with you. So we're on my deck here, and this is a place I really love to meditate when I can. I live in Minnesota, and so it's cold a lot during the winter and the fall, and our, so when we have summer and it's beautiful, I really want to enjoy it. So I, I meditate out here. Sometimes I do sessions out here on the phone. I really love it. So the, welcome to my deck area and I want to share with you. So I ordered this shirt and I got it in the mail yesterday. Yesterday was June 25th, 2018. Now I ordered this shirt because it's a Disney World shirt or a Disneyland shirt. It says Neverland, so it's a Peter Pan shirt, right? I love Disney. I really love Disney. Disney World is really special to me. I grew up um, going to visit relatives in Southern California, and so I'm really drawn to that, which also is what draws me to Hollywood as well. And so I just have a lot of connection there and uh, a lot of really good memories. And so this Neverland shirt, I saw it, I'm like, I want that. And it arrived yesterday on Monday, the 25th of June. And so I wore it yesterday and I just popped it on today. I'm recording this video on Tuesday, the 26th. And I just popped it on today for this video so you could see it. And here's the backstory. So this morning, I, I was chatting with my oldest son he is 15, almost 16. And I said, I, I need a channel. I need to do a channel today. And I'm not sure who to talk to. Who should I channel? And he said, I know. And I'm like, what? He's like, what's the date? I said, I don't, I don't know what the date is. It's the summer. You know, it's June something, you know. <laughs> so I, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know, you know. And he's like, so he grabs his phone. He looks up the date. And he said, I know who you should talk to. He said, yesterday was the anniversary of Michael Jackson's death. And my son knows that I totally loved MJ when I was growing up, childhood, super connected. And I thought, that must be why I've had his energy around lately in the last week or so. Even when I was driving back from a very late night on a soccer tournament, like a five and a half, six hour drive, constantly Michael Jackson songs came on that was this weekend and so must have been leading up to his anniversary of his crossing over into the afterlife. So I'm going to share with you a few things that I have now. This was um, this is a gift that my mom gave me after I think it was after Michael Jackson died. Yeah after his passing she gave me this book it has wonderful pictures and all sorts I mean the pictures are just incredible that are in this book a beautiful book and knowing that I loved Michael Jackson she gave it to me it says Michael by the editors of Rolling Stone and just a beautiful homage to him just the pictures are so gorgeous and so I just loved it I mean check this out look at that so I've been rather whatever your opinions are of Michael Jackson you understand what it's like when you're a fan right especially when it was your childhood and it was like a lot of his songs were the soundtrack to my childhood, fifth grade, sixth grade, um, just a really big part of my life, especially fifth and sixth grade. And so I told my husband, so I didn't channel at that time. I told my husband, we got, he got home when we went on a walk and I said, I need to get out my memory book, my memory box, rather my box. And so I'm gonna show this to you. My mom gave this to me several years ago, maybe 10 years ago now, this big wooden box with some stuff that she found when um, she was moving. And so I know, okay, so what does this look like to you? Let's, it's not, I mean, it might be a little morbid, but it kind of looks like an urn, doesn't it? It's not, it's not, you guys. Um, or an old silverware box, which is kind of what my dad's urn looked like. Just, let's just be honest here, a little authentic. But, you know, we're an afterlife channeling channel, and so it's probably fitting that this, memory box for me looks like an urn maybe i don't know anyway so i'm going to open it up and you guys are going to watch me look through it 
And I'm going to share with you some of these, these things that come forward as a result of looking through it. I don't know. It's not all Michael Jackson stuff. Some of it is. And oh, like this one poster that was on my wall growing up and I wrote on the back of it, bought this at Cheapskate. Cheapskate was a roller rink back in my neighborhood, back in the 80s and 90s. I spent a lot of time there. Here's some stuff from, looks like middle school. Yep, middle school collages and things. Um, essays that I've written. I used to really like to write. Um, it was a really big part of my life in junior high. I was definitely a writer. I did a lot of con um, contests and stuff. There's some stuff on here. Um, here's one of the essays. My mom obviously saved all these clippings. Of some things that I won awards for my writing and things. And so these are really great, actually. It's really cool to see this. I remember this stuff. Oh my gosh. This is one of my Why Winter Was Wonderful essays I wrote. All right, here's more books that I made. And this was, I think, second or third grade. Let's see. I'm not sure what this stuff is for. Let's see. Oh my gosh, there's all these certificates in here. I thought art project, language arts. Let's see. Cover design, essay contests, all this. These are the certificates and stuff. Um, I thought this was going to be Michael Jackson stuff, you guys, but it's not. Uh, let's see. Oh, my sixth grade diploma. Um, oh, I was on the flag line in junior high, and then I was a cheerleader. Here's my letter for cheerleading award. I'm not going to show you all this stuff. Um, more essays. I did a lot of writing. I mean, I knew I, I've always been like a talented writer's conference. Oh, with a play for sixth grade. Oh, drama, theater, thespian stuff. I did some of the acting stuff, but I'd always pick like the weird roles, you know, like I'd play guys and I'd play old ladies and I just did liked the weird stuff. There's a lot of stuff in here. I have no idea what's in here. Oh my gosh, I know what's in here. This is cool. I'll talk about this in a little bit if I have a second. And if I don't, I'll do a part two and I'll talk about the blue folder. My part two will be my blue folder. Just checking my mic here because I just pulled the cord a little bit. So let's see if there's any Michael Jackson stuff in here. 1984. No pictures some old school pictures oh my gosh you want to see me as a little kid it's kind of funny here you go little girl Bridget here I am again I don't even know what grade this is in and then some cool art from a fair oh my gosh the monkeys <laughs> Yeah, I had friends in junior high that were really into the monkeys. They would watch all sorts of, you know, the reruns after TV and stuff like that. Here's my little cheerleading thing from, this was uh, ninth grade at my little middle school. Recognition for what? Oh, a speech contest. I won some kind of speech contest thing. And some other stuff in here. I really thought this was going to be participation, marching band, flag line. Oh, here's another Michael Jackson thing. This is what I'm looking for. Oh my gosh, I remember this. Oh, more Michael Jackson. This is the jackpot. I bought this book. I wanted this book so bad. This is the Billie Jean. Those MJ fans, you know, give me a like on that. Give me a like for Billie Jean. Oh my gosh. If you liked Billie Jean, put it in the comments. Oh, it was so cool. Billie Jean. Um, oh, God, that was my favorite song, I think. I got this as a gift for my aunt and uncle in California in 1984. <laughs> 1984. Oh, my gosh. I love, love. Oh, my gosh. This is just great stuff. Great stuff. So 1984. So this was an older book, obviously. 
yeah the most recent pictures in here were from like the Pepsi commercial unfortunately it's an accident that happened during that time it's some of the Grammys that he won were in here too and then this is the last picture in this one look at that oh Michael you're so cool he was so cool back in the day you know my little letter and then oh here we go oh I love this one you guys this is my favorite poster of all time history okay this is the poster where he's in the white he's kind of preppy looking this is what that's what we called it when I was in school kind of preppy looking check it out can you see it can I get back far enough for you to see it Michael Jackson oh it's kind of musty smelling but there you go oh I loved this I probably kissed this poster many, many times. I mean, let's just be honest, okay? Yeah. All right, so that's the Michael Jackson. A couple more letters and oh, another poster, you guys, another poster. Let's see? Oh, look at that. This was from February 1984 from Jill for my birthday. I don't even remember who Jill is, but thank you, Jill. And then, oh, here's a picture, one of my newspaper clippings. Michael Jackson newspaper clipping. There we go. And that. And then that's it. That's what's in here, my friends. That's what's in here. So the Michael Jackson stuff, I thought there would be tons of Michael Jackson stuff. There's not tons of Michael Jackson stuff. There's just a little bit. We're going to do the blue folder on another video because I'm not on the Net Monkey stuff. I had that in here. Um, I know that there's a whole thing on one side of this that is for somebody else that we can totally channel and talk to and talk about. So we'll do that in another video. So let's talk about Michael, shall we? So as I mentioned, I ordered this shirt because of Disney, right? My sister's in Disney right now, Disney World, and I super miss Disney World and I'm really itching to go. I like to try to go once a year, even if it's just me and my sister or just me and one of my kids that kind of thing because it's super spendy to do that um, but I love Disney and like I mentioned it's really sentimental to me and it just feels magical well so I ordered that the shirt because of that and just you know put you in a good mood right and it says Neverland well it arrived on the day that was the anniversary of the death of Michael Jackson in one of his homes his Neverland ranch in I think it's by Santa Barbara uh, you know, one of his homes or his ranch was called Neverland. So this is not a coincidence. This is what we call synchronicity and psychic work and intuition and energetic stuff where things get into alignment or come into alignment. And so I have been feeling him and in a nostalgic way. And so I wanted to share some of that with you because I think it's important to recognize that even though we are spirit, we are intuitive, we're psychic, you are intuitive, you are psychic, you are connected to energy just as much as I am. I just do it maybe in a different way or I do it like um, super powered <laughs> or something, you know, with this work here at Above Life Channel. I, I'm i still really very much a person, very connected to my human life. And Michael Jackson was a huge part of my childhood. As I mentioned, I love to dance and I really loved his dancing. That's what really drew me to him at first. And then the music, and um, I loved Billie Jean. Oh my gosh, I loved this song. This was one of my big things, my big connections. And he knows that, like in the afterlife when we connect and we talk. It's totally a scenario where he, I don't want to say he plays on my emotions, but he kind of does with, um, I mean, I'm not a little kid anymore. I'm grown up, I'm an adult, so I don't get all swoony or anything when I talk to him. And actually it's really different because I'm a mother. And so when I connect with Michael, it feels like I'm a mom and he's the kid. That's what it kind of feels like. So it's in a very healing way, um, a supportive way, but I'm also uh, serious because there's some things that he has to work through and work out, you know? And I've mentioned this before that his spirit feels different to me than other spirits. And different is not a judgment of good or bad, it's just different. Remember that. Different doesn't mean good or bad, it just means different. And so, but he as a spirit is definitely more solid, tangible, energetically, definitely much more connected to human life, his human life. It's not because of his legacy, it's not because he 
feels like he has to be here. If it's because he feels the, now I'm feeling like this racing in my heart, so I feel him present. So let me just calm myself down. You can come in, be fine. He's off to my left side. He's got his black hat on, this black hat and his kind of curls are down. Um, and looks like a red shirt, black pants. And uh, he's thin. He's really thin. Like when I see it, he's just really thin. And uh, he's always got black shoes and white socks. And I, I think that's just my thing because that's how I think of him maybe. I've never seen him in tennis shoes. Do you ever wear tennis shoes? He says, yeah, I wear tennis shoes. I wear Nikes, he says. Don't you remember seeing me in Tigers? Which are like kind of like Asics, I think, back in the day, you know? I'm like, no, I don't really remember seeing you in that. <laughs> It's like, these are my dancing shoes, he's saying, because the bottoms are slippery. The loafer type shoes that you see him in, they're slippery bottoms. So he likes how they move. But no, he's like, no, I wear tennis shoes. Just not, not as much, you know, not, not how you'd see me. I, I prefer these, they're easy to slip on. And, you know, so if I, have to wear if I have to wear shoes, he says, I just slip these on, it's easy. Um, will you talk a little bit about, um, because all this is coming up because it, we just passed the time where you transitioned, where you went into the afterlife. Can you talk a little bit about or help me to explain to others how your spirit is different a little bit than how maybe I would see or perceive or feel other people's energies? Can you talk just a little bit about that? He says, what do you want me to say? I'm not really sure what you want me to say. I don't want you to say anything specifically. I would just like you to maybe kind of, can you describe for me, Michael, how it feels to be a spirit, how it feels. He's like, you mean how it feels to be dead? <laughs> yeah, can you explain that? That's kind of a difficult, he's like, that's kind of a tricky thing to describe to people. I don't think people really want to know that. They do because it's really important in the work that I do in here at Above Life Channel to be able to share with people, articulate the different experiences people have when they become spirit. So when they're full on spirit versus having a body, how does it feel different to you? So then, then they know what to expect and it makes so death is not so scary. And he's like, oh no, death isn't scary. He's saying, no, death isn't scary. I wouldn't want people to be afraid of death. You know, there is such a thing as God and there is Jesus and there's Mother Mary and all the saints and there's angels and it just depends on what you believe. He says, it just depends on what you believe. And he says, I'm not in any position to tell anybody what to believe. I just, I do want to share that encouragement. And so people don't worry about it. Don't worry about it so much. Can you talk about you specifically and how you experience the afterlife now? Because like I said, you feel a little different. Your spirit's a little more solid than others. And he's like, you calling me fat? You know, like, he's like, what? <laughs> Am I out of shape, he says? Am I out of shape? <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, I just mean energy-wise, like feeling you. He says, I know, I know, Bridget. I know what you mean. Yes, uh, yeah, he says, yeah. It is different, I think, for me. And you could probably, he's saying, he's saying to me, you could probably tell them about that more than I could. Because to me, it doesn't feel any, I don't know what to compare it to. It's not any different than what I just know. My experience is my experience, he says. My experience is my experience. Can you try to describe it, like compare it to human life? Well, he's saying it's relatively simple. There's not much schedule or there's not a clock. There's not a list or to-do list or there's really nothing that has to be or needs to be done. And... It's kind of just like you're waiting, but you're not waiting. You're resting, like, and I don't mean like resting, you know, like sleeping. I mean like resting, like it's not, there's not pressure, there's no panic. And I felt, um, I felt a lot of pressure, you know, as a, a person in that, in the human life, I felt a lot of pressure. Do you feel like you're a person or a spirit now? I'm both, he says, I'm both. Do you feel uh, uh, difficulty or separation with that? I mean, it, it seems like it might be hard to do that. Well, it depends on what you mean by hard. I think there's a misperception even by you that I'm lonely. And I think that that's some of the remnants, some of the leftovers of my human experience. So I definitely, I would say I was definitely very lonely and 
because people didn't understand, you know, they didn't get it. They didn't get me. And that's really painful to know that people don't get you, don't understand you. Even your own family doesn't understand. And the public loves you so much. And all these strangers just want what's best for you. They want, well, they just want you to be happy. And, but they think that you're happy just, you know, performing and being on stage. And that's true. That is true. That's a big part of me. And as a person, it's a big part of me, a part of who I am is performing. But there's another part, you know, that I really feel that I missed out. And I don't want my children to experience that. And that's the, that's the part I think that you feel that makes me feel more whole than others, more solid than others in your words. I prefer the word, I like the word whole. It sounds, sounds a little nicer. It doesn't sound like I'm so tormented. I don't want people to think I'm dragging chains around, you know, wandering around Neverland or something. You know, that's really spooky and I would never scare anybody like that. But yes, I think that many people could actually sense me as a ghost and maybe misunderstand that and think I'm stuck. And even you've used those words, Bridget. You've talked about that and, and maybe I am. Maybe to some extent, he's saying, maybe to some extent I am, but it, it's by choice. And I want people to know that part, that you have a choice and I have a choice. And so talk to me, well, what do you mean choice then? You have a choice to stick around or to move on. Yes, we all have choice. At any time I can change my mind and do something different. But my children, I, I feel needed. I feel it's hard to let go. It's like we're connected. And I feel like how he's describing this, it feels like to me like they're connected through this pain. Like they're super close, like he can be really close to his kids, like physically close to them and then, but can't touch them and they can't touch him. And it's that to me is like tragic. Like I wouldn't want to live that. And um, do you think that there's a way that you can find peace? He says, yeah, I'm, he says, I'm working on it. I'm hoping. I think anything's possible. He says, I think anything's possible. And I'm, I'm really taking care of, will you describe that to me? Well, you know what I mean by that. You know, it's like therapy, you know? I'm, I'm in like a, I'm in and out of a place that I can be cared for. And you can describe that, I think, better than anyone else. Will you, can you talk about that, Bridget? Uh, yeah, I can. It kind of almost feels like a care facility. Like when someone gets surgery and they can't go home, but they don't need the hospitalization, for example, that's kind of like the same thing. They need to be able to, you know, get their physical therapy and get their body back into alignment, working right, and then they can go home, right? That's where he's at. He's kind of in that care, the rehab facility, okay? He says, yeah, I like that. That's a good way to say it. Thank you. That's a really good way to describe it. Yes. And it's by choice. Tell them how much I want to heal. I want to be healed. Because the more I heal, the more my children will heal. And we're so connected. And I feel very responsible to follow through on my commitments. And I love them deeply. I love them so deeply. And I miss them very, very, very much. And I know that they miss me. And, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking but I'm doing the best I can. Yeah, and he says, thank you, by the way. Thank you for sharing that uh, message for my daughter. He's saying, thank you, by the way. Thank you for sharing that message for my daughter. You're welcome. He's very kind, you guys. He's very kind and he's very appreciative, but he does feel very young, um, very, he says, youthful. He says, I like that. <laughs> okay. But almost, I mean, he does really do, he does feel childlike, you know. He says, I like your shirt. I like that. I know you would. I know. He says, it's so sad. Tragic what happened in Neverland. He's saying that's tragic. I know. I know. But we got to focus on the positive, right? Yes, we do. We certainly do. Right? Let's agree to that. We're going to focus on the positive. He's like, yes, ma'am. Thumbs up. He gives me a thumbs up. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when I work with him, I've done um, a few, three or so, maybe four personal sessions with him, just like healing sessions with spirit, which I've never done before. <laughs> it's just kind of how Michael and I have worked together. And so um, 
and I've never had a spirit ask me to do that or I've connected with that I felt like I need to offer that and if they want to do that then I am uh, will reciprocate as much as I can and so that's what he and I have been doing and so um, which is a different kind of experience for me as a psychic too and as a medium I suppose he says oh you're good at it I'm like thank you okay they're gonna totally think that I'm making that up so you need to cut can you kind of come in like we're gonna do a selfie can you get close Prince does that to me he's like oh Prince does that Prince might he's like oh, Prince gonna be okay with that and he says Prince gonna be okay with that he gets kind of mad he's kind of territorial about you you know he's like he's kind of like not sure about me I'm like I know come on just come on let's do a, a selfie okay get in real close all right get in real close okay guys feel his energy it's right here on this side of me he says, heal the world, and I literally see his glove come up. <laughs> I've had that song in my head for like five days, heal the world, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. I've had that. I need to listen to that song. I think I will. All right, so if you're still watching this video, thanks for making it to this point. Go ahead and put some comments below. What are your, are you an MJ fan? Are you? What are your favorite songs? from Michael Jackson or your favorite memories of Michael Jackson. Go ahead and post that in the comments, please. I would love to know from one MJ fan to another. Thank you for sharing. That's really nice of you. He says, oh, yeah, you're welcome. He says, thanks for letting me talk. <laughs> yes, I'll do it again, I promise. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see when. This is Bridget at Above Life Channel. Remember, the purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. And we do that with weekly channeled messages from interesting afterlife guests. Be sure to like, subscribe, and to share this video with others you think would enjoy it or benefit from it. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Thanks for being here.